Come on in. I'm Dr. Murphy, this is Dr. Selwyn. This is uh, our patient, Mr. Cruz. Um, you've got 15 minutes for um, taking the history and examination, and then we'll ask some questions. Yes, lovely. Mr. Cruz, nice to meet you. Hello. How are you feeling today? Uh, nervous, shattered. Uh, yeah. So I have a letter from your doctor, and your doctor um, has written that you had an episode of collapse. Could you tell me a bit more about yes, that? Yes, this happened just yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. the day before yesterday. Um, I was just quietly reading, you know, everything seemed to be fine. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose for, I don't know, difficult to say, doctor, but from uh, you know, perhaps a second or two I didn't feel great. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I knew I was on the floor. So you weren't feeling great just Just, just the, uh, just, oh, the, you know, sort of mm -hmm. flash before, and I said, I'm not feeling very great. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I knew I was on the floor. Okay. So have you lost consciousness? I might, you must have done. It seemed to be, uh, I suppose I must have been on the floor for about two or three minutes, three by, three the, minutes. The, the, by the feel of it. But then just, for no reason, I'm just reading the book, and then just something, and then the next thing I knew I was on the floor. Would you mind if I ask you more specific questions Please, no. about it? So you said you weren't feeling quite right. Was there anything specific that you've noticed? No, nothing. That was the strange thing, Doctor. It was just, it was it's, it was almost instantaneous. It sort of turned the page and, that's not right. And then, um, next thing I know, it's... Any, any pain in your chest? No, nothing. Any palpitations? No, not really, no. no. Any breathlessness? No. And have you noticed any problems with your vision just before the collapse? No, no. Okay. And when you regained the consciousness, you said you think you were out two to three minutes? I would have thought something like that. Okay. Um, you said you were woken up on the floor. Did you injure yourself? No, I was fine. No. no. And when you regained the consciousness, were you aware of where you were at the time? Did you recognise you were on, in your own flat or did you feel... Yeah, I thought, I, th I thought, yes, I did. I mean, in a way, that was a slightly strange thing. I felt, you know, uh, yeah, I felt what, what's happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't feel that I was... Out of anything, you know, I was just... So did you recognise your surroundings? Oh, yes, yes, okay. yes. No. And when you regained the consciousness, was there um, any symptoms like pain in the chest? No, nothing. Palpitations? No, no, breathlessness? No. Did you bite your tongue by any chance? No, no, no. Um, and apologise for this might be a bit of a personal question, but have you been urine incontinent? No, no. Um, no and no. did you open your bowels? No, okay. no. Have you noticed any legs or arm weakness? No, nothing like that. Okay. No. Neither before nor after. No, that nothing like that before or after. Okay. No. And did you manage to stand up yourself without? Yes, 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 okay. yes. And for the rest of the day, have you been feeling well? Yes, I've been. Mean, I just it's just given me such a fright. I mean, of course. Yeah, no, I just tell me. So no, that was it. So that's why I'm here. Um, and just before that episode, have you been feeling well? Yes, I've been feeling, you know, quite quite fit. Yes. And um, did the episode occur in the morning or in the afternoon? The episode occur occurred just about oh, two o'clock. I suppose I hadn't had. I'd just been sitting there quietly reading. The... And on the day, have you, have you had your lunch? Have you had your breakfast? Yeah, I'd had morning? breakfast and such. Yes, I'd had everything, and I just took a very light lunch, and that was it. Just, you know. um, and was anybody present during that? No, episode? no. No. Okay, so nobody saw no, it. nobody saw it. Okay. And have you had anything like that ever before? Well, about, it might be eight or nine weeks ago, I suppose. Oh. It, it, difficult to be precise, but what happened then was slightly mm -hmm. slightly different. But I had been out um, golfing with the, uh, and, and I'd come in and I'd had lunch and I was sitting at lunch with my wife. Mm -hmm. And I started feeling again slightly some hot and such, and then apparently I collapsed. And in front of my wife, um, she said I was twitching a bit, uh, I was sweating profusely. She naturally got very worried, and uh, she phoned an ambulance, tried to ask me, phoned an ambulance, not resuscitate me, but just make sure I was all right. Mm -hmm. Phoned an ambulance, uh, and by the time the ambulance came, I was fine. So I was a bit naughty, if you like, and I sent the ambulance away. I wasn't going to go mm. uh, in, into hospital. So I, I, I didn't go in. And that, I see, that was about eight or nine weeks ago. So that was quite 
and in between those two episodes had yeah, a pain in my fine, yeah. And with the previous episode, any pain in the chest before, no, any breathlessness palpitations, no. and have you lost consciousness as well? Yeah, I see, yes, I was, I was, I, yes, I, I did lose consciousness of that, there's no doubt. And, and f was it four minutes, seconds? Oh, minutes. Minutes. Minutes, minutes and ages. And again, when you've woken up, were you aware where you were? No, I was, I was less, I, I was less, uh, it was less obvious as to where I was. I mean, I was, I was fine, but I, it had obviously, I took a bit of coming around, mm -hmm. but by the time the, the ambulance men got here, I had come round and I was fine. I mean, that was the issue about it, Doctor. It, you know, it goes from this to that. That was fine. And with the previous episode, again, in urine continence, no. tongue biting, no. but your wife mentioned you had some... I apparently yeah. said I was sweating profusely and my eyes had rolled or something like okay. that. But would, would you mind if I speak with your wife after? Please do, no, please do. No, okay. no. It's very useful to, to speak yeah, with somebody yeah. who, who witnessed yes, the episode yeah. because sometimes it gives us additional information. Yeah, right. um, apart from those two episodes, are you usually fit and well? Yes, I'm suffering, I suppose it's age related. I'm getting a little bit of arthritis and such, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a problem. I'm not getting as much as golf as I used to like. And about a while ago, I had palpitations or something and like some of the arterial fibrillation or something came up but it's not bothered me and nothing's been done about it i mean I've, it's been fine i've not it's not been an issue but i think that was what was the term that was used but that was a while ago doctor okay. and what do you mean by while ago Is oh it no, months, no years, years a number years, of years, years. Over, over. and have you been investigated at the time no no, no. well it's, yes but i it was it's, it's it's never come back it's never repeated itself and it's, it's not just i've just yeah. And at the time when you had palpitations, were you feeling unwell with them? No, 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 not, not, not really, no. Okay. Um, and would you mind if I just ask you a few questions about your health in general? Yes, so, yeah. in general, do you have any problems with your breathing? No. Any lung conditions? No. no. Any problems with your tummy? No. Any nausea, vomiting recently? No. No. Any problems with passing urine? Uh, uh, unfortunately, whether it's age related, a bit more mm -hmm. frequently. And is that new or...? Yeah, but it's, all, it's over... Uh, again, it's always difficult, Doctor, to, to, and something like when you're peeing too often as to how long it's been going on. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have noticed it. And, and as a result of that, I've, I've sort of been watching my fluid intake a wee bit. And by watching, do you mean you restrict your fluid yes, intake? Yes, because, you know, if you're, you're not drinking as much fluid because I'm worried I'm going to get caught short, as it were, so... That's so how what, much fluids would you drink on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, it's difficult. Um, it's difficult, you know, to be precise, yeah. but I, I don't drink a lot. I mean, I'll have a cup of tea in the morning and a, uh, need a glass of water occasionally, and I keep trying to discipline myself to have okay. it. But the other thing is if you're sort of going into town on the bus or anything like that, you're, you're restricting your fluid intake. Do you drink um, any coffee? Not a lot, because I think coffee was something that was, you know, when you read the things about it, then you keep well clear of it. Any energy drinks? No, no. Um, have you noticed recently any problems with your bowels? No. No diarrhea and constipation? Nothing at all, no. Okay. And have you lost any weight? No, no. I'm pretty, I try and quite disciplined with my weight. Um, and in your health in general, apart from atrial fibrillation that you've been told in the past you might have, any problems with your heart? No, not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. Have you ever had any seizures? No, no. Um, and are you diabetic? No. No. Have you ever been told you had a high blood pressure? No, no. no. Do you drive? Yes, and um, that's one of my big worries, Doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife doesn't drive. So what's worrying me is this, I don't call it seizure, call it, I don't know what people mm -hmm. will call it, is this going to have an impact on my driving? Because that really does wonder, worry me. Of course. Um, we, we can talk about this after I examine you. Yes. Okay. Um, do you take any regular medications? Uh, I would take an aspirin, 75, mm -hmm. is it? Aspirin. The baby aspirin. The baby aspirin. Yeah. And occasionally I take paracetamol when the old hips and knees begin to. Um, would you mind if I examine no, you? That would be okay. Please. Well, I'd take um, my shirt off. If possible, that would be yes. very helpful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's fine. Um, do you smoke? 
Uh, I used to smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I stopped smoking what, about 20 years ago. Well done. Would you mind if I start with examining your pulses? Thank, Thank you. you. And do you drink any alcohol? Yes, I have. Uh, I do. I enjoy sort of two or three glasses of wine a week, I suppose. Nothing in excess? Nothing in excess. No. And any family history of any health problems? Not that I'm aware of. My, my, my parents uh, died in their 70s, 80s, and, and uh, you know, in, in those days it was sort of old age. There was, but there was no, I had no evidence of, of mother or father having suffered from heart disease or anything. But it might well have been the heart at the end of the day, but I don't know. Would you mind if I listen to your heart? Fine, thank, thank you. you. I'm just going to quickly listen to your neck and the other side. Can you stick your tongue out for me, please? Excellent. Well done. Okay. Would you mind if I just check the strength of your arms? Would that be possible, Same please? Me. Can you pop your arms like yes. that for me, please? Don't let me to push them down. Oh, now push them down for me. Good. Pop them into a boxing position. Push me away. So this this arm straightening up. Sorry, so this way, yeah. yeah. Right. Push me away. Good. Now pull me towards yourself. Good. Same on this side. Push me away. Pull me towards yourself. Good. Excellent. And can you lift this leg up for me, please? Keep it there. Don't let me to push it down. Good. And the same with this one. Keep it there. Don't let me to push it down. Okay. Well done. Perfect. Um, I'm going to come back and do a full neurological examination of your arms and legs, looking at the reflexes as well. Um, so obviously you, you've mentioned you went to your GP and you were quite concerned. Is there anything particular you worried about? Yes, I think there is, Doctor. Uh, what's concerning me is what is it? What's wrong? Mm -hmm. Is it a stroke? It's to a certain extent or non-medical is, is, is this driving issue as to whether mm -hmm. having had this sudden blackout, if you like, uh, am I going to be able to drive? I think, as I said, my wife doesn't drive. Uh, and um, that is a concern. And the other concern is that in about four months' time, we had sort of a, uh, a plan of a long-term plan to go to Australia for, uh, for a while, and that's in about four months' time. So would I be able to go? And these are the sort of things, but there's the sort of medical and the non-medical issues. Of course, me. of course. Um, so I think there's a few questions um, I can answer at the moment and to answer some of the other ones we'll need to do some further investigations. Um, so first of all, when I've examined you I can feel that your pulse is irregular at the moment. So I do think you, you have a regular heartbeat, um, atrial fibrillation as you mentioned, um, that, that has been mentioned Too in the past. Um, we need to do some further investigations for that. We're going to do a tracing of the heart at the moment. Um, also, listening to your heart, I can hear a murmur, so we need to investigate that as well, because both atrial fibrillation and um, a heart murmur can cause episodes of collapse. Um, I'm going to come back to do a full neurological examination. Depending upon the results of that, we may need to do some scans. Um, although I don't think from the history you've given me that, that those episodes represent a stroke. Um, with regards to driving, while you're undergoing investigations, the current guidance is that you're not supposed to drive. Um, and I do apologise for that, but we need to do what's safest for you um, and for other members of the public. So no driving? From, not that, from at when? the moment. From now. Um, we need to investigate the cause of your collapses. There are a few features, the fact that you didn't have warning and the fact that they're occurring while you're sitting down. Um, that um, to, to us, I mean, we, we need to investigate this further um, and at the moment we wouldn't consider it would be safe for you to drive in. In Australia? Australia at the moment is four months away, so I think... Um, but by then we should have more information available um, and depending upon the results of these investigations that we've planned today, um, we, we're going to be able to get further advice in the future. At the moment I can't give you the definite answer, I'm afraid. There's a definite no drive? No driving, I'm afraid. All right. So how does one 
Is that through the DVLA or something? It? It's the DVLA guidelines, um, especially in the patients uh, who didn't have warning and while they're undergoing investigations for a potential cause, because we don't know what the cause of your episodes um, is, um, we, we need to do some further investigations. Once we are able to identify the cause, we're going to give you more definite answer. Okay, that's time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right, um, so first of all, can you tell us what you found from the, or summarise the history and tell us what you found on examination? Uh, this gentleman presents with two episodes of collapse associated with loss of consciousness. With the first episode, he had some prodromal syndrome, he has continuous recovery in both episodes. Um, there's nothing to suggest that at the moment those episodes are um, of epileptic origin, but I need to gather more information from his wife, who is a witness of the first episode. From the physical examination, I have identified that the gentleman has a regular and regular pulse, and the auscultation of his chest, I could hear ejection, systolic murmur. Um, I would like to go do further investigations. Uh, we'll to we'll come on to that first of all, but. Um, what what's your differential diagnosis then? So the differential diagnosis at the moment would include um, arrhythmia as a cause of the um, syncope. Um, also, um, the gentleman could have a sy syncope secondary to valvular heart disease. From the history he has given me, I would also consider a basophagal symptom, a basophagal um, collapse secondary to dehydration. If the gentleman. Um, told me that he's been recently restricting his fluid intakes. Um, the brief neurological examination didn't point towards neurological cause for this collapses. However, I would like to go back and perform a full neurological examination. So how are you going to take investigations forward in the first instance? So at the moment, the first investigation I think we should do would be an ECG to exclude or confirm a trophic relation which this gentleman clinically has. And further down the line, you would require 24 or 72 hour um, tape um, to exclude any other arrhythmia. Um, with the view of a new potential new murmur, I would like to do an echocardiogram to assess the valvular function of his heart. Um, I would also like to do a blood pressure, uh, both lying and standing, and perform blood tests. His GP very kindly has already performed liver. Uh, sorry, uh, renal function and full blood count, but I think we, would, we should also do other blood tests. Okay, and in terms of immediate management? So I think it depends upon the underlying cause um, of, of um, his collapse. If, it's, if the gentleman has um, indeed atrial fibrillation, they would need to assess his chat flask score to possibly consider him for anticoagulation to prevent stroke. Um, if there's any evidence of aortic stenosis, we would need to assess the severity of it. Um, and depending upon the severity, the gentleman may require surgical intervention. Uh, okay, so um, in terms of the um, anticoagulation, is there anything that puts you off from the history? So from the history itself, um, the, the fact that the gentleman had two episodes of a collapse with loss of consciousness, we would need to think about his risk of injuries. Okay. And thinking about the nature of these single episodes, does that help guide you and, let's say, have the aortic stenosis? You know, um, do these sound like these are collapses due to aortic stenosis? So, aortic stenosis can cause collapses, however, those are usually associated with exertion. Um, and is there any exertional symptoms? Not in this gentleman. Yeah. Okay. So, and it, I suppose that's ties in with the driving situation. You, you've said, or you told him not to drive, and your concern was there wasn't a prodrome. What is the other concern about the situation in which these episodes happen? It's the fact that both episodes occurred when the gentleman was sitting down. Okay. And so, do you know what the, the duration for which you can't drive on the basis of these? Uh, so I'm aware that when a patient is undergoing investigations for potential causes of syncope, the DVL advice is not to um, drive. Um, with regards to the individual causes, we need to consult the DVL guidelines depending upon the underlying cause of the crisis. Okay. And you've mentioned the atrial fibrillation as a cause of the single collapse. Can you just expand on how that could be the case? 
So atrial fibrillation uh, can cause collapses either when the heart rate goes too fast or too slow. So that's why then we would recommend to do um, a, a 24 72 hour tape. Um, and it is an arrhythmia as a cause of the collapses. But it, it is a common um, presentation of atrial fibrillation that is sinking? Um, 